I'm excited, folks. It's not every day that I get to come across a new company that I think is unrivaled. And that's exactly what I think we're looking at today here as we're looking at new holding or new bank. New, N-U, is the ticker or the stock symbol. And what, what are they? So they are a hyper-growth fintech based in Latin America with major investment investment backers such as Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway or Tiger Global or SoftBank or Tencent. And they have several attributes that make them unrivaled. And that's that's what gets me excited is when you see something that makes you stand apart, that gives you that right to win over time. And heck, that's even the name of this channel. For those that are tuning in for the first time, my name is Daniel and you're watching Unrivaled Investing, a no-hype mission-focused channel trying to find you exceptional companies and unrivaled investments. In full disclosure, this is not financial advice. And at the time of this video publication, I did not own shares in New Holding new stock and you, though I am looking into it. So New Bank or New is a hyper growth fintech based in Latin America. They've grown from 3.7 million customers in 2018 to nearly 50 million in the third quarter of 21. That is amazing growth. I mean, look, never before in the history of mankind could a bank grow organically like this. You're talking about several hundred percent, over a thousand percent in just a few years. You know, at, at this scale, you know, to get to tens of millions of people at this type of scale, this is just incredible. And they've built an army of loving customers and not surprisingly have a sky high net promoter score where other folks effectively refer them. Part of this is because they've provided credit cards and bank accounts, critical financial services to over 5 million people who are gaining access to the effectively a financial system for the first time ever. First time ever getting a bank account. First time ever getting a credit card. This is life changing for these potential households. You know, this this across Brazil, Mexico, and Colombia. This is a big deal in terms of you know innovation and opportunity. Given their significant competitive advantages that I'll talk about in just a second, and huge growth one way. You know, you you have 650 million people that live in Latin America. It's not surprising to see many top notch investors getting on board, including Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway, Sequoia, Tiger Global, SoftBank, Tencent, and many others. So what makes New so special and, and potentially unrivaled? I, I do think they are unrivaled. I, I think there are several things here. First is that 80 to 90% of their new customers come from word of mouth or unpaid, unpaid referrals. This is a byproduct of customers seemingly loving them and a huge cost advantage relative to any future competitors that want to take share. So if you and I wanted to start a bank that competes with them, it would be really hard to win customers when they are winning 80 to 90% of their new customers effectively by word of mouth and unpaid referrals. For context on why this is a huge advantage, their market expense actually declined by over 50% from 40 million to 20 million, from under 20 million in 2020, as they grew by over 13 million customers. Now, part of this was also a COVID bump, you know, as, as effectively being a, a cloud online, you know, fintech solution. But wow, that's incredible. Not many businesses can grow by over 10 million customers on a, a marketing budget of under $20 million. That is just incredible. Uh, they're also building a powerful brand is, for example, the number of complaints per million customers is a fraction of their much larger competitors. So look, it's less friction points than their competitors. You know, it's, it's working better. Uh, as a mobile and cloud first fintech player, they also have better data and underwriting. As you can see, their 90 day delinquency rates on their credit card portfolio is consistently better than Brazil's industry average. This is critical. You know, you, the, the, this line below, which shows the delinquency rate, is consistently lower than the industry average. This is critical, as over 50% of their business is tied to credit cards. About 30% is interchange fees, which is not really susceptible to, let's say, credit risk. Um, it's interchange fees, which are paid by merchants, effectively saying, hey, I'm, I'm happy to do a transaction with someone that has a credit card. And about 20% plus from interest on their credit card loan portfolio. Management also estimates that their cloud-based platform will result in an underlying cost structure up to 85% lower. So a 85% lower cost structure than their incumbents that own thousands of physical branches, employ tens of thousands of workers, and generally have lousy service or just service that isn't as good as you could, you could see with the complaints just a second ago. And so here it is by having an asset light fintech business model could potentially have much lower operating costs. This could lead to huge advantages over time. The most obvious being 
cheaper debt, you know, where they could write cheaper loans for businesses and consumers. It's also worth understanding this cost difference is very real because in Latin America, the top five banks have significantly more market share, around 70 to 85 percent for the spread across the top five banks. And this is significantly more market share relative to the U.S. and Europe and, you know, relative to the number of competitors that you see, let's say, in U.S. in the U.S. and Europe. And this means generally less competition, lower service and higher fees. So, you know, an opportunity, I'd say, ripe for a disruptor like Nubank. Not surprising to see, you know, folks excited with this IPO. Okay, so what about valuation? First, a quick plug. If you're interested in following along with my personal financial journey, go to unraveledinvesting.com. Each month, I call it a potential multibagger as well as my personal portfolio. We also have an exclusive community dedicated to learning and trying to find exceptional companies on Discord. So once again, if you're interested, go to unrivaledinvesting.com, click join the journey. And if you enjoy videos like this, learning about potentially unrivaled companies, please make a point of hitting the subscribe button and hit the thumbs up. So in order to value new, you should first understand that there's a lot of optionality here. While they first started off with debit and credit cards, they're fast growing into a platform with additional solutions like personal loans, insurance, investments, etc. There's a lot of things that you can up sell to. There's also a lot of opportunity to expand it to new geographies as they've only relatively recently started operating, for example, in Mexico in 2019 and Colombia in 2020. At this point in their journey, their revenue primarily comes from a few sources. Yeah, as you can see what I've highlighted here, interchange fees, which is, you know, the fees that merchants pay. This is for the nine months ending September 30th, 2021. This is out of nearly $1.1 billion in revenue. This is U.S. dollars. So over 30% in interchange fees. That's the fees, once again, that merchants pay them on every transaction when their customers use a credit, credit or debit product. Um interest income on the rapidly growing loan books and that's this other component whether or not it's credit card or personal loans which is growing very very quickly so it's spread across those three that, that i just called out that's over 70 percent of their operations that's the vast majority of what you're looking at but you can see there's a lot of other individual line items driving it while they're significantly unprofitable right now, and you can see that right here, you know, despite generating around $1.1 billion in revenue, they're at nearly a $100 million loss. It is worth understanding that they have meaningful gross profit, you know, around a 50% gross margin, um, and that scale could be very lucrative, maybe 15 to 25% operating margins. We'll see. A lot, you know, a lot depends on how this business develops over time, and I'm curious what management has to say about that, you know, over time. New is actually really really hard to value with a lot of with it's it's just there's a lot of optionality there's a wide range of possibilities there's a lot of optionality there's a lot of opportunity and they have these huge competitive advantages so they should grow at a very good clip but the question is how much is sort of baked into the current valuation so a lot depends on how they execute if they can grow at a faster rate than let's say 60 percent annualized over the next five years this could be a home run um, if not, if they can't grow faster than, let's say, 60% annualized, it'll be tougher for them to have a great return. And once again, you know, as always, I pencil out a range. Of course, stock prices can go way higher or way lower, depending on execution, depending on sentiment. But as I'm looking at this, I'm sort of penciling out, you know, it's currently a little over $10 a share, a little over 4.6 billion shares outstanding, so a little under $50 billion market cap. So I'm looking at a company and I'm thinking, you know, maybe over the next five years, potentially, let's say, 100 to 150% upside, maybe greater than 50% downside, not the greatest risk reward. Um, you know, but, but the fact is that they are unrivaled, and that's what's getting me excited here. So I am conflicted as I look at this. There are some data points that give me pause on, let's say, paying up or assuming that they could have a really high multiple in the future. Part of this is you look at a lot of Latin American stocks that have just gotten hammered uh, in the last few months. I did a previous video on Stone, which uh, Buffett and Kathy Wood's ARC also owns, and that's just been creamed. Uh, so check that video out. Uh, but but other you know thoughts is this macro exposure to Latin America generally has higher inflation and unemployment. Employment, uh, which you know that can create challenges for a banking-related business model. You know, in Latin America, you oftentimes have less stable governments, which could result in direct impairments to their balance sheet. Because you know, if if let's say someone puts a deposit and they have you know billions of dollars of deposits, well, what are they investing that in? Okay, some of it's credit card receivables, but some of it's uh, going to go into let's say government loans. You know, effectively 
government treasuries. And, you know, if there's ever a government impairment or government default, then that could have a direct impact you know, impairment on their own business model, depending on how they invest that. Um, also, just uh, it'll be a challenge for them to grow. Um, I, I think that I think there's a really good chance that they grow at a very high clip. But part of the challenge will also be a product of their own success. Well, you know, what do I mean by that? We're 28 percent of Brazilians age 15 plus are already customers. So that means that they need to do a lot of upselling in the future. That said, their interchange fees are recurring in revenue. So that that should be, you know, favorable but you know, just just thinking about that aspect is is something worth understanding. Um, and there's also potential regulatory changes. You know, I I would think that you know you you've seen risks around potential interchange fee changes that could result in lower revenue for them or changes around the tax rate. Currently, their taxes are a bit higher, around thirty percent. So that said, I am still thinking over. I'm very inclined to to consider a teaser position with this just because it is unrivaled you know if if you are in you know I, the, the challenge here is that i usually like when i want to buy something i usually like just on the back of the envelope i can pencil out something where it's like oh here's something that I think can go up several hundred percent. And that's, for example, what I called out to my Journey subscribers last month is a stock that I also think is unrivaled. I'm like, yeah, based on this math, I can say 600% plus upside. Whereas here, you know, I'm looking at this and it's like, yeah, you really have to have amazing, amazing execution. And it's possible because... They are unrivaled, I'd argue. So I am thinking it over. Um, if you're interested, go to unrivaledinvesting.com to check out whether or not I ultimately do pull the trigger. At this point, I haven't. I'm still thinking it over. Maybe at some point in the future, if you're watching this and you have a strong opinion on new and you're like all in or, or you have some reservations about it, definitely leave a comment below. And if you're watching this I in and, and, and a few months from now, remind me to look again at this because I love reviewing those unrivaled investments, these unrivaled companies, especially if the price is much higher or much lower. So you could rub it in my face if it's much higher and you could say, unless I buy it, uh, or you could say like, Daniel, let's let's revisit if it's much lower. And if, if this video has been helpful for you, please make a point of hitting that thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. Thanks so much for tuning in.